All right. Okay. So actually, uh, what they do in the SPM syllabus is very, I would say is very good. Okay. So from form four, there are a lot of chapters. Uh, for form four, there are about um, nine chapters. Okay. Sembilan babs. Okay. And from five, other about seven. Okay, so you add up everything together is actually simple math 16. Okay, so if you want to do well here, you must know everything here. Here's where you learn all the basics. You tatao basics, you tatao ni. Then your SPM, if you See for your SPM, you either sleep, nanti. Okay, this is your result. Then your per account will show something like some something like maybe F. Uh, depending on what grade you want. Okay, so if you're not A, you're not A plus. Of course, uh, there's something that you have to do lah. Okay, in order to achieve this kind of result. Okay, it's not something that. You just sit down at your home every day, play games, or every day watch uh, anime, or every day go go out and have fun. Then you get this kind of result. No, okay, a big no. All right, so very simple. Okay, I always tell my students when you come to my class, there are just three things. Okay, for those that have already read my uh WhatsApp class group chat, the uh, what what you call it, the status there. All right, you see that the first thing that you need to do is what? You make sure that you attend the class 100%. Okay, you don't skip any class. Okay, even though you might, okay, you might not be free or there's some urgent things. Okay, sometimes it's unpredictable. Okay, so you may skip, but make sure you, first thing you tell me first. Okay, make sure you inform me. Okay, just let me know. Like, okay, so um, today uh, I'm not feeling well. Okay, maybe sometimes it's too personal. You don't, uh, you might not be open to tell me. Then it's okay. You just say uh, something came up and you can't join the class. Okay, so just let me know. Okay, after you inform me, make sure you go and watch the recordings. Because each class is recorded like now. All right, so... After every class, I will upload the recordings into the Google Classroom. Okay, which you will receive later. Okay, later I will collect uh, you know, the emails from you guys. And then I will send the, uh, the thing to you. Lah, so you join from there. Okay, so make sure you go and watch your recordings if you miss a class. Okay, but of course, even though you may attend the classes, but there's something that you're not sure. Okay. Then what can you do? You can either ask me, but if you think that is something that is too big, okay, because sometimes even the, uh, from the WhatsApp text, it is uh, hard to explain something. You know what I mean? Because you type, 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 you know, a lot of things to say. So best is, you, if you can, go and watch back the recordings because the recordings is always there for you. All right? So any part you're not sure, go and watch it back. All right, so that is first thing. Okay. Attend all the classes. Okay, second thing is very simple. Do the homework. Ah, uh, do you think you come tuition do need to do homework? Uh? You need to. Okay, you perlu buat homework. I akan bagi homework. Banyak banyak punya. Okay, tapi jangan stress lah. Okay, you got one week to do. Okay, but then when I say banyak, uh, you, you start to feel, oh, shit lah, the homework lagi. But it's not that many lah, okay? So it's just like moderate lah, okay? I know how you feel, okay? Because I'm a student as well. Yeah, I used to be in, uh, in Form 4, Form 5, okay? So, and even now, I'm still a student. So I know, like, how does it feel like to have a lot of homeworks? Okay, so I, I know what to do. 
okay so uh you do homework so one week okay in one week time make sure you complete it because uh i will give it almost every week okay so if you don't do this week homework then you will be lost okay so the the purpose of doing this homework is to make sure you do the practice okay you keep practicing what you have learned from this class then you apply into the questions because in SBM, you got no one to ask all right so you have to in while you're sitting on the SBM, you need to bring out from your memory and everything that you have learned so if you don't know how to do the question yourself then ah you know lah, you see something like this one lah, okay which i don't want you guys to see lah. okay so make sure you yourself be disciplined i give you homework now uh, make sure you do okay very simple okay then last thing the third one is enjoy uh, if you want this one uh, can also enjoy okay just treat it like um something that um like a class normal class you just come listen make sure you pay attention don't sleep okay and then after that find one hour during the weekend go and finish my homework okay then uh next week come again so the routine keeps going on and on okay so beside this class normally i won't recommend my students to study extra Okay, don't have to. Okay, because if I give you the textbook and I ask you to read in advance, meaning let's say, oh, I tell you, uh, belajar, belajar, uh, minggu depan saya akan masuk dalam bab empat. Okay, make sure you guys balik, okay, uh, baca sendiri dulu, nanti apabila cikgu datang, uh, cikgu akan uh, ajar. So, uh, ini lebih efficient lah. Okay, I won't say that. Okay, and you don't have to do that. All right, because if I give you a bug four and go and study yourself, definitely you won't understand a thing. You don't know apa apa pun. Okay, so don't don't have to waste your time. So I come and explain. After that, you can do the homework. That's it. You don't have to spend extra time on this subject unless unless you really tak faham satu part atau few parts, then you go and sort it out. But other than that. I am pretty sure that you don't need extra time for this particular subject. So you can spend other times, other time for other subjects like your sejarah, your if you're doing admin, you go for admin, your you know, some subjects that require more time. Is that all right? Are you guys clear so far? If yes, you give me a clear, C L E A R clear. Put it in the chat box. Clear? Okay, very good. Okay, and one more thing that I would like to request from you guys is whenever I say, uh, you know, give me a clear, give me a yes, make sure you guys uh, give some responses. Lah, all right, so that I know that, oh, Harish is um, awake. Uh, Shinro is awake. Huying is awake. You know, all these Ari, Yuva, Tiran, Ali. Okay, I know that you guys are awake. And the rest, ah, mm, I need to see if you guys are paying attention or not. All right. Okay. So, great. Let's see. Mm. Okay. Can you see the screen? If yes, you give me a yes. So you will see about one pengenalan kepada uh, pre-econon. So this is your about one. Yes, can see. And also I already given you the copy, right? In the uh, WhatsApp. So you can download it from there. Okay. So you can see that this um, thing is actually... Uh, it's not something from myself. Okay, I just extract it from your form four textbook. Okay, so uh, your, in your form four textbook for Bab Satu, there are about 10, 20 pages. So I make it into here. Lah. So about six to seven pages. All right. And this Bab one, every year I would tell my students, 
mm, you don't have to memorize now okay how do you spell rice either z or s okay memorize it don't have to i mean now okay of course before exam uh yes lah. <laughs> okay so normally uh because i did uh preconan like you all when i was in form 4 and form 5 so uh, I will only go into my bab one. I will go and study bab one. I will go and read bab one. I will go and memorize bab one before the exam. Okay, that is my way of studying lah. Okay, but before that, I will make sure I what understand it. Okay, make sure you guys faham ah. Jangan hafal tapi fahamkan. Okay, when you faham satu benda, it will stay in your head for some time maybe not 100% very clear but somehow you know how the logic is and then when you, you know revise it again then uh you will be more sharp now you will be more clear all right so this part you don't have to memorize but for now you just listen and understand all right and normally for bab 1 I'm explaining all this thing is a bit boring as you can see, it's all words, words, words. But when we go into Bab 2, uh, then you start to see a lot of numbers. Okay? So for Bab 4, you can say that in uh, not only Bab 4, uh, I will say per accountant. Uh. Okay? In accounting, not only per accountant, even you go to college, university, accounting, uh, okay, is 90% number and 10% uh, words or pre, uh, perkataan. Okay, so in an exam, all things they know they would test you 90% for calculation for all the numbers. So you will see numbers sampai you you pening. Okay, but for now, it's just a 10% of words that you need to uh tahan lah. Okay, so let's start. Are you guys ready? If you are ready, give me a ready R E A D Y ready in the chat box. Okay, very good. And also make sure you guys have a, a notebook. Okay, a long one. I, normally, I prefer a long one. Okay, a long notebook. Like, mm, I'll show you now. Okay, something like that. It can be any cover, but it, it is a long one. Okay, so that whenever you do a questions, you go like, you don't have to go through a few pages. Uh, all right, so the long notebook. So, uh, when there are some key things or keywords or some special things that you want to write down, make sure you write it down. All right, so that's for yourself, your own record. Okay, so since you guys are already, let me start your prayer corner. Okay, so Bab Satu is called prayer corner kepada pula. Okay, let me repeat again. Bab Satu ialah Pengenalan kepada per accountant and per accountant in English is accounting. Ah, this is something that I believe uh every one of you will know lah. Okay, accounting is the English of per accountant. Okay, so uh here there are two things that you need to know. Okay, so yang satu is called simpan kira. In English we call it bookkeeping. I'll explain to you what is this simpan kira. And then there is this per account which is called accounting. Okay. And now for what we are learning is called per account. Bukan simpan kira. Tapi for this simpan kira uh, is actually dalam per account. Okay, let me put it another way. Simpan kira is an easier job, while per accountant is a harder job, more difficult. Therefore, per accountant salary, you know, a salary, ah, gaji, ah, you earn more money from per accounting, while from bookkeeping, because it's easier, therefore, yang dua itu, 
your salary will be lower. Macam tu faham tak? Can you see the difference between simpan kira and perekanan? So, from simpan kira, the explanation yang bagi daripada textbook is proses perekanan yang meliputi aktiviti mengkumpul. What is mengkumpul? Collect. Okay, kumpulkan barang. Kumpulkan dokumen. Alright. Lepas tu, you menyusun. Macam you menyusun meja lah. You menyusun buku. buku. Okay, so now you menyusun the document, the record. Okay, so lepas menyimpan lah. Okay, so after you collect, you arrange one by one from January, February, March. Okay, one to A to A, B, C, D to Z. Lepas tu you simpan. Okay, lepas tu you merecord. You record something that you have to record. Okay, let's say January. Mm, January. Okay, January saya sudah uh, belanja. I already mm, spend about 100 ringgit on baju. Then 110 ringgit on petrol. Okay, so this is in January. So after you kumpul all the receipt, okay, because at the receipt gun, so when you beli baju dar daripada Uniqlo, you add the receipt. So you write down the figure there. So all these are called recording. And is it? So we keep the receipt and at the same time, we record what is the figure from the receipt. So this is what we call a record. And after that, kita melapor record-record perekanan ini. So after that, we have the report. Okay, melapor means report. You tell, you tell who? Tell uh, maybe your, your senior, your, your supervisor, your, your director, finance director, or someone who is higher than you. Lah. Okay, so you can see that this report, Melapo, is actually passed down to this background. So from here, let me highlight for you. In the background, process background yang meliputi activity mengumpul. Hey, macam sama, menyusun. Menyusun. Eh? Okay, menyimpan, eh, nampak tak? Merecord, it's here also. Okay, and then melapor, here. You see, so, you can see that all the simpan kira jobs, apa-apa yang terlibat, aktiviti terlibat ke sini, one, two, one, two, three, Four, five, I mean five is here. Lah. Okay, it's here actually. One, two, three, four, five. Boleh nampak tak? Can see or not? If can see, you give me can. C A N. Boleh nampak, give me a can. And you see the similarity, right? What we call similar in BM. Huh? Persamaan, is it? Yeah, something like that. All right. So it's something that is similar. Okay, but after you melapo, okay, from here you melapo, okay, now it's the accountant job. Ah, okay, accountant yela. Ah, uh, what is accountant in BM? I so forgotten. Okay, so you know what is accountant now? Okay, siap orang yang buat accounting lah. So that is accountant. So now ini bukan accountant ah. Accountant that bought ini, I mean, bookkeeping is, uh, siapa yang buat simpan kira, whoever that does bookkeeping is not an accountant. Or we call it a bookkeeper. Okay, this is called bookkeeper. And bookkeeper is not an accountant. But an accountant boleh buat bookkeeping. Just like all these things. Mengumpul, menyusu, menyimpan, merekod, dan melapor. And then after that, you have to do more analysis. You have to analyze. Kenapa January saya uh, bayar 100 ringgit for my baju, tapi on February, I only spend uh, 80 ringgit on baju. And then after that, in March, yo, kenapa suddenly you jump up to $300 on baju, on shirt? Why is it like that? Kenapa satu January 100 ringgit, why February only 80 ringgit, but in March 300 ringgit? Now you have to know why. Okay, now as an accountant, you go ahead and analysis. 
Oh, so a lot of baju ini uh, telah beli daripada Uniqlo. Okay, Uniqlo. Okay, now you analyze. Kenapa kita uh, bulan uh, Januari pay this much, uh, February pay this much? Oh, maybe Uniqlo in March punya design lebih cantik. Ah, that's why kita beli lebih banyak. Can you see? Or maybe oh, uh, baju yang lama itu sudah banyak sudah rosak so sekarang kita perlu lebih banyak lagi ah so you analyze why like that okay so that is what bookkeeper doesn't do okay mereka tak buat menganalisis that's what accounting yang buat okay, after tu you mentafsir what is mentafsir mentafsir in english is um interpret yeah now after you analyze you need to read like what does it mean Okay, then you merancang. Merancang means plan. You have to do planning. Can you see or not? You need to plan. Okay, so since like that, so now you plan. Okay, maybe in April, kita hanya uh, spend 50 ringgit because we already overspend. Or maybe in next year, you do something. Okay, based on the record, record and analysis from here. After you plan, then you menilai, you evaluate. Okay, that. Okay, the planning workable that you compare with your real performance. Okay, and then you remove, you do a summary out of it. Ah, so now even you listen all these things, macam sangat susah kan? Ah, that's why when you check the the salary of an accountant, okay, and I was use a chartered accountant. A chapter accountant is different from accountant. You have to know this. Okay. And anyone, okay, anyone can call himself an accountant. Okay. Sesiapa pun boleh panggil sendiri accountant in uh, Malaysia or in the whole world. Lah. Okay. As long as you are doing something that is accounting related or even uh, small stuff like memory record, doing debit credit, you can call yourself an accountant. But if you call yourself a chartered accountant, then it is a different thing. Okay, you see a chartered this thing. What does this chartered means? Meaning you have gone through a period, uh, a period time of training. And you see, or not normally it requires three years. Okay, so you the bought trainings for three years. Okay, that is required by uh, the standard. Okay, and then you other knowledge yang penting for this chartered accountant. Okay, then only you can call yourself a chartered accountant. Normally, it's accountant America the other training bunya. Okay, they just go to a company and then work and then like that, like that. And then they call themselves an accountant. But when you hear people, they call themselves a chartered accountant, then it is a different thing. You know, when this chartered accountant, they have something here. They have all these things. One of it. Uh, okay, later I'll come to here and explain to you. Okay, but now I just want you to know the difference between a chartered accountant and accountant. All right. So uh, if you want to be an accountant, if you want to study accounting, of course, uh, go for this one. Okay, don't be this one. But this accountant, call yourself accountant. The salary may be 3000 only a month. But you want earn more money, you become a chartered accountant. Maybe you do the same job, you can go 8000 a month or even higher, depending on which company you're working for and what is the job scope that you're doing. Okay, do you understand what is a chartered accountant and accountant? If yes, you give me a CA. What is CA? CA means Chartered Accountant short, in short form. Okay. So do you understand? If yes, you give me a CA. Wow, Chartered Accountant. Okay, so if you go into a world, uh, if you're a Chartered Accountant, uh, it's just like people looking up to you like a doctor. Uh, okay. And just as I said, anyone... Uh, I mean, how do I put it? Um? You see, uh, a doctor, uh, after you study medicine, 
Okay, I think you have to study medicine about four years or five years. Um, okay, about that. And then you have, after you study the medicine, you pass, okay, you get a degree, but you're not a doctor. You cannot call yourself a doctor. You're not a licensed doctor. Okay, maybe you can go and go to a pharmacy and then you, you know, you always, when you go to a pharmacy, right? Okay, you can number other, a few person there. Okay, they are not doctor. Okay, but then they can advise you on the prescription of the ubat ubat, okay, the medicine, but they are not doctor. So they cannot perform any surgery. All right, but for those people, okay, the students, after they complete the degree and then they go to the housemanship and then they go for the training, housemanship and whatsoever, another or one to two years. And then they have to go to the hospital and work for a period of time. Okay, after they complete all this training and have all this knowledge, then they, are, they can call themselves a doctor. Okay, when you are a doctor, ah, then only in the hospital you can bought surgery. You book up badan. Okay, and then you go and uh, play some plant tra uh, what, heart transplant or whatever. Okay, but this doctor is licensed doctor. And this doctor, when your salary, of course, is higher than siapa yang complete, just completed medicine. So it's the same thing for accountant. Okay, accountant, maybe just finish your degree, you can call yourself an accountant. But you have to go through a period of training. Okay, then you need to apply for the license to be uh, to call yourself a chartered accountant. That's why a chartered accountant is uh, the salary is way higher than a normal accountant. Okay, and in Malaysia, for your uh, information, in Malaysia, uh, chartered accountant is one of the highest paid job. Wow. Okay, chartered accountant is one of the highest paid job. Huh? If you have friends, okay, if, I mean, you have friends, well, I mean, maybe you have friends that want to do engineering or maybe you're someone to become an engineering, okay, engineer. Um, I mean, it's not bad, but uh, in Malaysia, becoming an engineer is like not very practical. Okay, you don't earn as much as an accountant or a doctor in Malaysia. But then if you go overseas, like UK or Germany, and study uh, engineering, and then you become an engineer there, then, uh, of course, that will be a different story. Lah, okay, the salary there will be higher than what is given here in Malaysia. But in Malaysia, you, if you say you want to get a high pay job, then normally people will go for accounting. Uh, what else? Are like Maybe doctor, but doctor is spent a lot of years, and maybe lawyer and yeah, this kind of profession, lah, other than going for the engineer or whatever. All right, so if you seriously are considering to become an accountant, then make sure you be serious. Okay, because all these things that you're learning here, you will be learning in your university as well. Okay, so if you can do this well, then in university, you can go and chill your relax. All right, okay, so done. So I already explained to you the difference between Simpan Kira and Prekonan. And in this form 4 and form 5, we all, everything that we're learning is Pekalan and Prekonan, this field. So it's a larger scope. Okay. And then we go to a kitaran prekonan. So if you go to your textbook form four, you see a kitaran prekonan. So let me draw it out for you. Mm. Okay. So first, you start off with what document? Okay. So when you go to your uh, textbook, you see something like that. Okay. After the document, you go to uh, buku catatan. Is it buku catatan pertama? Pasu fokotan eh. Okay, let me check. Double check. Double check. Yeah. Okay, I'm right. Okay, we are. Okay, buku catatan pertama. Okay, and after that you go ledger. Yeah, there you go. Ibangan juga. Yeah, for those that don't know what are these things, then don't worry about it. But uh, I believe most of you already know this stuff, right? Okay, after that, pelarasan. This is a process. We call it kitaran prakanan. After that, you got 
imbangan juga terselaras. Okay, then 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 uh, is it catatan penutupan come first or the the other one? Uh, yeah, catatan penutupan first. Catatan penutupan and lastly is the penyata kewangan. And then come back to this document. Okay, so you can see that this document is actually in you. We will be learning it. Okay, you don't if you don't know all these things, never mind because we'll be learning everything here. All right. So uh, the document you will learn it later in Bab three. This one will be in Bab four. You can see you can check the textbook. Okay, ledger is Bab five. Imbangan juga is Bab six. Pelarasan is Bab seven. Okay, and then uh, all this thing later will be Bab eight. So you can see that that's why I say this um. The, the syllabus in Perekonan in Malaysia, okay, the SPM syllabus is considered not bad, okay, even though it's in BM, okay, which I don't like it, okay, but other than that, okay, the sequence, the concept is actually helping you to uh, when you go into the college or university, when you're doing a degree in accounting or you're doing something like ECCA or ICW and so on. So, all these things are actually there. It's just that you have to translate from BM to English. Okay, but I, I think it's not a big deal actually. All right, so later we'll be learning all these things in different parts, three, four, five, six, seven, and go on like that. Okay, so this is the Kitara Prekanan. And then we come back here. Okay, so I already, you know, written down there for you. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. Okay, so then, okay. So in pre-accounting, we got sub bidang. Okay, pre accounting is very big. Okay, but there is sub bidang, just like branches. Okay, down the road. So you can see here. Mm, let me take this off. Okay, so there are four sub bidang. Empat sub bidang. One is called pre accounting kewangan. In English, we call it a financial accounting. All right, then so what does this do? Membuat pelaporan mengikut pelawayan MSB. So meaning this is normally just buat pelaporan lah. Okay, and in Form 4 and Form 5, we mostly learn about this thing. Financial accounting. All right, okay, now when we go to two, the number two is called Perekanan Pengurusan. What is Pengurusan? Pengurusan means management, managing. All right, so when you translate it in English, it's actually called a management accounting. Okay, so in this management accounting, perikanan pengurusan, what do you do? Kamu menyediakan belanjawan tunai dan perancangan pengelolaan bagi penegak. So normally, this management accounting will be learning it in Form 5 a bit. Okay, it's not as much as uh, perikanan keuangan. Okay, so I would say that this uh, perikanan keuangan will learn 70%. A form 4, form 5, okay, and then for management accounting will be 30%. Okay, and then all this pengauditan, percukaian, you won't be learning it in your syllabus. Okay, but when you go up university, definitely you get to learn about audit. Okay, what is audit? Memeriksa. Okay, audit is all about checking. Ah, okay, mereka will check setiap kewangan, disertakan dokumen. So this so normally there are different fields, right? So when an accountant, so the first you set a financial accounting, this account accountant, then someone will come and check what you have done, okay, to see if betul ada tidak, okay, accurate or not, okay. If this auditor check up, okay, all these things betul, okay, then only will pass to the cukai, the taxation department. So in Malaysia, siapa yang uh, managing the tax LHDN the lembaga hasil dalam negeri so your your parents i mean now lah april okay your parents your parents will be busy submitting their tax okay so to where to LHDN 
Okay, so this where they memastikan pendapatan boleh juga dihitung dengan betul. So they will check tax. So what does this tax do? Where does this tax go? So after they check the tax, do the tax, okay, then they will go to our government. Kerajaan. And then government will distribute this money to different parts like electricity and electricity we have to pay ourselves, right? Okay, maybe yang uh, lampu kat jalan-jalan uh, itu, jalan raya punya lampu and then bagi uh, orang yang perlu wang itu, then for your, what else ah? What else expenses that the government is paying for? A lot lah. Okay, like now, you're going for your SMK. Okay, SMK, your parents don't have to pay anything. But then, siapa yang bayar kepada cikgu-cikgu uh, ini? Uh, all these cikgu-cikgu perlu ada gaji, right? So, the cikgu-cikgu, all the police, uh, mereka are taking money from the government. And where does the government take this money from? The government take our pocket money and give to all these teachers and, uh, and police lah. So we are actually somehow paying for our SMK, okay? Because it's through our parents' tax, tax, taxes, okay? So you have to know that why do, do we have to uh, do this taxation? It's actually for the society, lah. okay? So, so far, okay, lah. if okay, you mean okay. Is it boring? Lah? Hopefully not, lah, okay? But so far, you following? If yes, give me a okay. So this is all the sub bidang lah. So um, sub bidang ada empat. All right. One, two, three, four. Simple one. Okay. Then you are the chiri-chiri kepimpinan seorang accountant. Okay. This is like chiri-chiri to become a, a leader lah. Okay. Kepimpinan your leadership. Kepimpinan your leadership. What is the chiri-chiri? What is the criteria? Okay. Become a, a leadership in an accountant. So all these things normally like is there a fact? So before exam, you just go through it. Then maybe memorize. Okay, so make sure the title. Uh, and for this title, Chiri Chiri Kepiminan. So there are three. Integrity, Credibility, and Accountability. So you see the T, T, T normally is in uh, this Kepiminan. So if someone check up, Apakah Chiri Chiri Kepiminan? So you just choose for the T, T, T. Uh, okay, Integrity, Credibility, Accountability. Okay, what is integrity? Integrity means jujur. Okay. Integrity, jujur. Okay. Credibility means apa? Adil dan objektif. You know what's adil, right? Okay. Tidak berat sebelah. Okay. That is what you learn from your moral. Kan? Okay. Credibility. Be objective, adil. So if any macam tu, then macam tu. Okay. You won't change your opinion because this is your friend. Ah, Oh, this is uh, Jeffrey or Jeffrey is my best friend. Ayah, lah, okay lah. Uh, this one I just close close one eyes and then open one eyes. Okay, but then if ini salah, then salah. You have to change it, even though it's your best friend. Uh, this is what we call a credibility or ideal and objective. All right, and then third, accountability. Accountability means bertanggung jawab. Simple. You know what's bertanggung jawab, right? Responsible. That's a leader, okay. As a leader, you have to be juju. Okay, after that, you need to be adil. If a member, if Bob bought Salah, even though Bob is your very close friend, you have to say, Bob, you discuss Salah, you have to change it. Okay, you have to do something about it. Okay, so that is adil. Okay, then accountability as a leader, leadership, you must have the responsibility. Okay, you have a sense of responsibility. So you have to be responsible. Like this thing is not doing, uh, it's not performing, then you have to do something about it. You have to deal with it, All right? So that's accountability. It's just that they're trying to be profession, professional, okay? So now, like, okay, use all the perkataan, like very high class. So it's actually the same meaning as our daily users, usage, okay? So you just change it to a bit, a different word, but same meaning. All right, so then that there's a chidi chidi copy minan for you, and then here goes for uh, the code ethical. Why code ethical? Code ethical means ethics. In English, what is ethics? Ethics means moral. Okay, so when you say are you ethical, so are you like, do you have uh, good manners? All right, so in as a professional accountant, what is professional accountant? An accountant, meaning as a chartered accountant. Lah. 
Okay. So a professional accountant is like a chartered accountant. All right. So what are the ethics? What are the code ethica that each member, each accountant must have? So here are the five things. I tell you, uh, these five things are, uh, I learned it in Form 4 and Form 5. In Form 4, uh, okay, this is in Bob 1. Uh. Okay, so um, I will just like, forget it. But I will remember it before the exam. After the exam, I will totally forget it. Okay, because it's not very uh, important. Uh, okay, because down the road, when you go to Bob 2, when you go to Form 5, there are a lot of important chapters. So these chapters is actually not important. Okay, but I would say you have to know them because uh, you have paper one and paper two for your pre subject. Okay, so paper one is 40 questions of objective. So you have to circle, circle, circle. So normally all this thing, okay, that I talk about, or the sub la, the chidi chidi kepiminan la, the code ethical la, okay, semua benda ni normally comes out in your paper one. Okay, and then for paper two, will be your subjective la, questions. La. So uh, you have to you have to do okay uh, calculation of calculation so in this you have to do five questions from here there are actually six questions but you have to do five questions out of it so there's a, a choice for you to choose out whether to do this question or do the other question so you have to do five questions here and then uh, paper one is circle objective questions a b c d then you choose d or c or d so here all this but one is in paper one all right so Yep, so that's why I say it's not that important. That's why every time after exam, right, I'll just forget these five things. But then when I come to what I'm studying now, okay, what I'm studying now is, uh, is a, a professional accounting course, all right? So it's called ICAW. Okay, so ICAW, you have to, you have to do papers. Okay, so there are 15 papers. So I have to pass all these 15 papers, then I can call myself a CA. What is CA? Chartered Accountant, all right? So for now, so far, uh, I'm, now I'm doing my fifth and sixth paper. Okay, so I have completed first four papers uh, out of these 15 papers. Uh, so I've already set four papers. Now I'm doing my fifth and sixth papers, all right? So, so far, in all these six papers, right? For these six papers, different subjects. So uh, there is uh, accounting subject, there's audit and insurance, there is um business technology and finance. Uh, what else? Uh, what I'm doing? Uh, law, okay, even in law, law subject and taxation, okay, all these subjects, okay, there is one chapter, Sadu Bab Gasitu, that talks about uh, this whole thing. In Satu chapter for this so far six papers. Every this subject, there's one chapter, is not one part. Uh. This is just one part. Uh. Okay, but in what I'm studying now, one chapter for this whole thing. Ethics, ethica. Uh, can you see how important it is? But then in your form 5, it's not that important. Okay, you just know them, what does it mean? And in the exam in SPM, maybe just come up one or two questions only. Or maybe sometimes they don't even come up. Okay, so you just have to know them. But I'm just telling you like how important this ethics it is. Because when you go out to work, you have to be ethical. Okay, you need to be jujo. Okay, you need to be um, confidential. Okay, kerasaan. Okay, so now let's go for one. Competency. So what is competency? Competency is competence in English. So if you know what is competence, then you know what is competency. So if you want for the explanation or keyword, means professional, berkemahiran, and berkeupayan. What's kemahiran? Meaning very able, okay? You, you have skill, skillful, something like that. Okay, so that's competency. Because when you go out to work, um, there are a lot of uh, what competition. All right, so as a professional, a chartered accountant, you need to be very competent, all right? You need to update your skill, update your knowledge, the latest. So now, what is the latest uh, trend in, in the whole world? So they talk about what? 
cryptocurrency, they talk about blockchain, they talk about NFT, okay, all these things you have to learn. So all the accountants, if they're chartered accountant, they have to go for courses. Okay, every year they have to do some courses, go for seminars, go and learn, go for classes to update themselves with the latest information. All right, so maybe those auntie and they don't know because they don't have to. But for accountant, they have to know all these things. Okay, what is going on in the, in the war and how does it affect the oil price rises? Okay, because of the Ukraine war. And then, you know, all these things, all the chartered accountant, because they're professional, they must know. That's why we say a competency. All right, okay, are you guys, Faham? Faham, you give me an F in the chat box. So this is competency for you. So no, you just look at all this um, underlying thing. Okay, so these are the keywords. So when you're doing the objective questions in your paper, of uh, satu, so when you see a professional or Bukka uh, Mahiran, then you know it's a competency. All right, so that's one. Then we go to two, integrity. So it's the same thing. Integrity means what? Jujo. So same thing for here. Bersikap Jujo, terus what? Very careful. Okay, terus, um, detail, precise. Supaya kita berlaku kekeliruan dan pemalsuan kenyataan. What's pals? You know what's pals? Right? Uh, something like fake. Or we call fraud. Okay, so as a professional, you have to be integrity. You must be other integrity. Tersikap jujo and terus. Okay, then third, kerasaan. Tidak mendedahkan sebarang maklumat kepada mana-mana pihak. You know it's Russia, 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 right? Okay. In English, we call confidentiality. Okay, you have to be confidential. Okay, so in the company that you're working, let's say I'm now, contoh ah, let's say now I'm working in a company, Kenting. Okay, can Kenting ah? Okay, so let's say I work there. As an accountant, so there are a lot of maklumat there. As an accountant, that you will know, all right. Like, what is the sales volume? Okay, uh, what is going on? What is our plan? Maybe we want to open another theme park in uh in Africa. You know, so that's our plan. But that's what we know, uh, because I'm working there, and I cannot tell anyone about it. If it is what this is Karasian. Okay, because it's confidential. What if our competitor, okay, let's say separate, let's say Sunway Lagoon, Sunway, okay, find out that, oh, Kenting nak buka satu team park kat Africa, oh, then Sunway straight away go and book up another one in there. Uh, cannot write. That's why a lot of information, a lot of maklumat, macam tu. Okay, so that is what an accountant must have, kerasian, confidentiality. Right, tidak mendedahkan sebarang maklumat kepada mana mana pihak. Okay, then four, objectivity. So same thing, objectivity ialah adil. You tidak berkompromi dan berat sebelah. Serta tidak, ah, uh, serta tidak terpengaruh oleh mana mana pihak. What's terpengaruh? Ter terpengaruh means influence. Okay, you will not be influenced by any party pihak. Contoh, let's say now you're an accountant. Okay, so um, what a contoh. Okay, so for example, an accountant. Ah, so now you're doing accounting for the company and the sales. Okay, let's say sales. Let's say profit. Ah, you know what's profit like? Right, it's untung. Okay, in BN. Okay, let's say the profit actually, actual one is. Uh, let's say fifty thousand. Okay, this is the actual one. You as an accountant, you the check, 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 check. You bought everything fifty thousand. Okay, but then, ayah, sepa, your maybe your boss. Okay, your boss lah. Okay, because you're doing this, your boss, you're doing this for your boss, right? Okay, so your boss say. Wow, after you see your report, you fifty thousand a lot lah. Can we make it 
ten thousand only ah. Can or not? Ah, can you see it? So now your boss asks you to do it ten thousand. Why? Because if you report fifty thousand, then your tax, your chuka, you have to pay more. That's why your boss say, ah yeah, don't don't need put so much one lah. Okay, even though we earn fifty thousand, but then we just tell uh, LHDN we earn ten thousand only lah. Okay, so we pay lesser tax. Ah, uh, now you as an accountant, you tak boleh, you tidak boleh terpengaruhi, cannot be influenced by your boss. You get what I mean? So even though he is your boss, but you as a professional accountant, you have to do uh what is the actual thing, what is the right thing as an accountant as a professional. You get what I mean? So this is what we call objectivity, meaning you tidak terpengaru oleh mana mana pihak. So this is objectivity. Okay, now last one fifth, sifat profesional mematuhi semua undang-undang dan peraturan. So this is very simple lah. Okay, you just have to obey mematuhi all the undang-undang dan peraturan. So that's sifat profesional. So this is a keyword mematuhi. So this is the five code etika. So when you go to degree, is all these five. Because this is universal, so this is something that is set is not set by Malaysia, but it's set by UK. Okay, so we are learning what is given by the UK body. So if not mistaken, this is from uh, FRC something like that. Okay, they have a lot of bodies of FRC, uh, ISAB, you know, a lot, a lot, lot of stuff. So this is the five one. Okay, so far okay or not? If okay, you give me an okay. Okay, give me okay. Let's see, let's see. Mm, what are the questions? So later, you go and do the question three, question four. So all these are stuff that we'll learn. Lah. Okay, so let's get back. Let's continue. So a lot of theories, but buried. This is just chapter one. Okay, now, okay, badan per ekonan. I can see you start saying, wow, all this MIA, la, MASB, la, MICPA, la, CIMA, la, ACCA, and you have to know that it's, it's not just here, la, okay? It's not just this five stuff. La, that actually a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more. Okay, like what I'm saying now, ICW is not even here. Yeah, then I see everybody there's CPA, there is a New, Z, uh, New Zealand one, Z something one, Z, Z, I don't know. Okay, there are a lot, a lot more. And then for the um, standard accounting that like what I say just now, FRC, then uh, you know, IFR, and then you got IAS, ISA, you know, a lot of like uh, GAP, GAAP standard, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, but in your syllabus, in your textbook, you will see these five. And these are the five things that might be come out in your paper one. Okay, maybe just one or two questions. Okay, so in, okay, you have to know there are a lot. Lah, okay, but each one of it has different function. A different, different, what, what is it? different benefits and different functions. Just like, mm, okay, very simple. Uh, okay, later I'll give you the example. Let's go through first. So first one, this is MIA. What is MIA? Uh? What is the full name? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's check together. Okay. So MIA is Malaysia one, but I want to, I forgot about the, the full name. So MIA is something Malaysian Institute of uh, accountants, yeah, this one. And see or not? So this is MIA. So the, the whole thing is called a Malaysian Institute of Accountants, but you don't have to remember it. Lah. If you need to remember, there are a lot, a lot. Okay, so this is uh, short form, M-I-A. All right, so this is Malaysia one. Okay, this is a accountancy profession. Lah. Okay, so let me explain to you what is this MIA. Okay, so as you see, can see, this M is stand for Malaysian. Therefore, this MIA is for those account 
or those people that want to become a chartered accountant in Malaysia, then they have to register themselves in MIA. Okay, so you can see that the first one is a menentukan kelayakan seseorang untuk menjadi ali. This ali means uh, a chartered accountant. Okay, so this is the body. You want to be a chartered accountant in Malaysia? You have to register under MIA. Okay, in UK, then there's UK one. In Korea, then there's a Korea one. Okay, in Singapore, then there's Singapore one. Okay, they call it a different term. But in Malaysia, it's called MIA. Okay, so this, this MIA is only for MIA one. Huh? So let's say today, me, I go to MIA and register myself. Of course, you cannot register. There's a, a requirement. Okay, I say this now. Three years working experience training and so on. All right, so after I fulfill all the requirement, I begin to the office and I say, I want to register myself as, as an MIA, a charter accountant in Malaysia. Okay, so after everything, okay, approved. So I am an MIA member. Okay, so I'm a chartered accountant in Malaysia. Okay, now imagine next year or tomorrow, I want to go to Singapore and work. Okay, when I go to Singapore and work, even though I am a chartered accountant in Malaysia under MIA, but if I go to Singapore, I'm not a chartered accountant there. I cannot do something that I can do in Malaysia or work in Singapore. Because in Singapore, I'm not under their, their body. Let's check what is the body for Singapore. Huh? I also don't know. So let's check together. Mm. Singapore accountant, Singapore accounting body. Ah, okay, you see, the accounting body for Singapore is called ISCA, it's called Institute of Singapore Chart Accountants. You get it now? That's why in this, your, your thing is just for maybe a few popular one and also what is in Malaysia. Okay, so as I said, just if I go to Singapore now, because I'm just an MIA, I cannot go there and work as a chartered accountant. So I go there, I am just a normal accountant. So my salary will be lower. All right. So other than menentukan uh, kelayakan, okay, mereka menawarkan latihan dan pelajaran dan pemeriksaan. So they will give all this uh, latihan and Pelajaran lah, all these courses to the member Ali Ali in the MIA, the Chartered Accountant. Dan mengenakan peraturan atas amalan profesional perkenalan, mempromosi dan mempopularkan profesional perkenalan. So these are their job. Alright? To mempromosi, to promote the job of accountant, a professional accountant. Alright? Okay, now next. Two. Okay, tadi ini is a body. It's like an institute. Okay, so you can like a club, I would say like a club, simple to understand. Okay, so there is members in it, can be members of this institute. But when we talk about MASB, this is not an institute, you cannot become a member. This MASB is all about PRY. And what is PRY? Meaning standard. In other words, law. But then this law is not the law that in Malaysia, like, uh, you cannot kill people lah. You cannot. Uh, you cannot. Uh, after you drunk and then you go and drive, cannot. Okay, or this thing. No, these are not the law. The law here I'm talking about is the law in accounting. Ah, okay. So this MASB lah mengubah dan menerbitkan pelawaian this standard per accountant. Okay, mereka menyimak dan membaiki pelawaian. So whenever you see a pelawaian. Uh, you know that this is from MASB. Okay, so this is a keyword. So you see all the underlying one is the keyword to know which institute it is or which uh, badan it is. Okay, so menyemang dan membaiki sebagai penasihat kepada accountant menentu uh, kepala minimum dan garis pandang dalam penyediaan lapor kewangan. So all they talk about is standard. Okay, in accounting, you have to do like that, do like that, do like that. Okay, you must see other, uh, these few things. Uh, these are all determined to be established 
by this uh, MASB. All right, okay, now, after this thing, then cross the line, and this is a different thing now. All right, this is a different thing. Okay, so tadi ini MIA, MSB is um, the Malaysia one. Okay, now, when we come to three, four, and five, this is more like a, a training. And also membership. And this is normally international. Okay, so there is MIGPA, CIMA, CIMA, and ACCA. And normally ACCA is more popular in Malaysia and in all the Southeast Asia. Okay, while my ICAW is hardly heard about, but if you check ICAW, is actually and it can because I'm doing it, so I will say, oh, it's actually better. Okay, but you go and do your research, okay, find out what's the difference between ACCA and ICW. Okay, I leave it up to you, but I'll just explain this thing. Okay, so MIGPA is from Malaysia, Bunya. Okay, but this is a place that you go and study, just that you're you are going university and study. All right, so you go and study and then. Uh, you come and work, then you become a chartered accountant. Okay, so this chartered accountant with your membership is not given by MIA, but is given by MICPA itself, or CIMA itself, or ACCA itself. So they have their own membership. So let's say you are ACCA, and you are the chartered accountant under ACCA, then because this is international, and this ACCA is from UK, CIMA also from UK. Okay, so when you have this uh, thing, then you can go other countries to work and you're still a chartered accountant because you're not under MIA. MIA is just Satu Malaysia. But for ACCA, anywhere, UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, uh, Australia, and so on. All right, so this is the body. So even my ICW is the same thing. Okay, so all these are like a, a training institute and then uh you you have you get membership from it okay so how do you differentiate them so for MIGPA, you just have to see memajukan professional melalui latihan and see a paperiksa so when you see a paperiksa this p is actually a MIGPA for MIGPA. this is just a, a shortest technique to remember lah. But actually you don't remember by the paperiksa because it's not related at all but normally it's this p that leads to MIGPA. all right and this is the malaysia one Okay, then CIMA, uh, you see B down pengurusan. So this CIMA is more, this M is actually for management. And this management in BM is what? Pengurusan. That's why when you see, this CIMA is mostly more uh, expert in B down pengurusan, the management accounting that I talked to you just now. And this one, B down perekanan pengurusan. All right, so this is SIMA accounting dan uh, penerbangan perniagaan. And then ACCA, you see membeli kimat sokongan uh, tentang peraturan dan undang-undang dengan uh, this blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you see underline, then this is the keyword for it. So actually, you don't have to memorize them now. All right, but you just have to see the key. You just have to know the keyword like actually, then it will lead you to the answer. This is it. Okay, so... Um, that's it for this pattern preconan. Okay, then this is a secara preconan. Oh my god. So this is secara. Um, you have to spend many time. I just have to see some this kind of bolden word. Lah, okay, so it's actually starting from what? Paling awal ya lah, bentuk kepingan tanah liat. So there's a tanah liat. Lah, so you study secara, you know, all this. Uh, because back then they don't have paper, ma, right? So they got this patula or this stone or this uh, something like tanah liat, then they start to record on the stone something like that, all right. And then okay, become better now. So you just remember in Masir or in four hundred SM, okay, they start to use papyrus. Okay, papyrus means kertas, and columns means 
pen okay all this with, with stuff all right so you just have to uh, know lah, okay adapters uh, and color mask okay is used to do the pre-conan to record okay after that you got system channel bagu which is double entry okay this is a bit uh, popular lah. okay and this system channel bagu is one thing that uh, we are using now okay later when we go to bug 5 you will learn about this system channel bagu Okay, and it is uh founded or discovered by this uh Pangyu Papa Prekonan. His name is Luko Pasholi. Okay, he is the Papa Prekonan, the father of accounting. Okay, then so when whenever you see Luko Pasholi, they normally will ask about system channel All right, and then you got later you got Prekonan Kosla. Okay, so slowly you can see that starting from beginning. They, they also got record, okay, 4,000, 5,000 5, years ago, okay, they record. But then they use different things to record and different concepts to record. And slowly, slowly it, it evolved, okay, tuka, 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 and then until now, okay, we start to use software, you know, software, online, and then data entry, and then debit credit itself, and so on. All right, so later we learn about it, and then this is Isaac. Uh, skip it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, chili chili qualitative. Okay, are you guys awake or not? If yes, give me yes. You're still up, or you're already down. You're still up. Give me a yes. Still following. Already is the tido. So talk until I feel like sleeping. Okay, just a bit, a bit, bit, bit more. Okay, then we are done. But uh, today I won't finish this bab satu lah, definitely. Okay, because um, a lot lah. Okay, later you have, this is an important part. Okay, I take some time to explain this and then we do questions together. So probably next class. And then this is a, a big part as well. But you don't have to, actually this is not that important. I just have to know because normally it won't be tested in your, Hardly, uh, hardly it will. Okay, you just have to know. So, okay, let's finish this one by today. Okay, then we'll continue the rest uh, next week. Okay, so this is a chili chili qualitative. So, uh, these are the chili chili when we are recording. In or we say in the... Or we are recording or what we are doing the report, reporting. Okay, so there are a qualitative assess and the thing cut. Okay, so you have no sometimes soalan dia akan tanya macam tu. Uh, apa tu ciri ciri qualitative assess? So you only can give one and two. This is the only, only two answers. Okay, if someone check up, uh, apa tu ciri ciri qualitative tertingkat? Eh? This is the poor one. Yang bad. And then when you add up, there are about six chili, chili, chili qualitative. Lah. Okay, so now look, look at the asas. One, correlevenant. Okay, means relevant. Lah. <laughs> okay, so you just have to add ke, ke and none. So it's relevant, it's relevant. So because when you're doing recording, you need to record something that is related and relevant. I can say, uh, you know what's relevant? Do you know what's relevant? If yes, you give me a R so that I didn't have to explain again. So I think relevant is a very simple bahasa, all right? <laughs> relevant. Relevant. Okay, a, a, a simple contoh lah. Okay, now this is an account prekonan. Uh, class prekonan, right? So we, are, we, are, we should talk about accounting. And what if suddenly I come here and tell you about agriculture. Oh, so dalam untuk menanamkan sayur, ah, uh, you must see other beberapa uh, what a portion of itu tanah, tanah, tanah hijau, tanah, tanah brown color bunyi dan tanah hitam bunyi. Okay, then you must see other seven tiga dua. Ah, then. After that, you must de-serumkan sayo. Is it relevant? Ah? Is it relevant to this class? Not at all. So this is tidak relevant. You get what I mean? So that is 
that's relevant because it's accounting class, so we should talk about accounting or something that's related to accounting, which is relevant. All right. So of course, when you're reporting, recording, while you're doing the accounting stuff, it has to be relevant. That's correlevant. Huh? Okay, then second one is per waculan bena. In English, we call it a faithful representation. Representation. Okay, meaning you have to represent. You wakyukan benda itu secara benar. Okay, so you can see that it's bebas daripada kesilapan material. Dia ada unsur berat sebelah, tidak mengelirukan, and it is secara jujur dan cermat. Okay, all these are somehow keyword for it lah, for this perwakilan benar. Alright, okay. Then after this two, other than this two, we got this chidi qualitative tertingkat. Uh, like it, this is more enhancing than you. And how do you spell enhancing? Enhancing. Okay, these are those are uh, enhancing chidi chidi. Okay, to make it more relevant and so on. All right. So the first one you lah. Okay, you can see the, a lot of kabole, kabole, kabole. So normally when you see all this kabole, kabole, it is chili katatingkat. All right. So the first one, chi uh, kabole bandingan. So just from this word banding. You know what it means, right? Meaning you do comparison. Okay, able to compare. Okay, that's why here they, they check up boleh dibandingkan. Very simple. All right. Boleh mengenal pasti trend dalam kedudukan prestasi dan kongan. All right. So, whenever you're recording, we have to do it keboleh bandingan. Let's say year 2017 and 2018. Okay, all the numbers here, it has to be able to what banding. Uh, that's why it's called boleh perbandingan. It's either year to year or company A dengan company B. Atau industry A with industry B. Ah, uh, Okay, so boleh banding lah. Okay, if boleh, so it is keboleh bandingan. Okay, that's the second one. Keboleh fahaman. Just look from the word faham. You know that it is mudah difahami. Dinyatakan dengan jelas. So, it has to be jelas. So, whatever that you're recording, all the number has to be jelas. So, when it is jelas, when we read it, boleh faham? Boleh. Uh, then it is keboleh fahaman. Okay, third one. Keboleh sahan. Sahan means boleh dipercayai. Okay? Meaning it is... Uh, Got other evidence, lah, okay? Boleh keboleh sahan. So, it's boleh disahkan. Okay, lastly, is permasaan. So, masa. So, this is uh, English, we call it a timeliness. Timeliness. Okay? So, what it means? Ketepatan masa. Disampaikan tepat pada masa. Because in accounting, right, we always have a deadline. Okay, kita mesti ada satu masa. Okay, when we say stop, then stop there all right and because this world is moving so fast and all the financial record all the vendor all the maklumat we have to do it according to the time okay and it has to be accurate tepat so this is called ketepatan masa disampaikan tepat masa so when i say this homework should be submitted by next monday Okay, so by next Monday, you submit. So there is permasaan. So if it is over, so you only submit it on Wednesday, then itu ialah tidak mematuhi permasaan. Alright, so these are the four things. So normally, when you see keboleh, 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 this memang ketingkat. And in asas, there are only two, kerelevanan and perwakilan benar. Alright, okay. Okay or no? Yes or no? If yes, give me a yes, okay. Ooh. Yes, 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 yes. I need more yes from you guys. Mm. Okay. So, uh, can we go for the last part? 
this one last part of the day then this we just sambung from next week okay pengguna penyata kewangan okay, what is penyata kewangan penyata kewangan is financial report and every company mesti menyediakan this penyata kewangan at least setiap tahun okay so every company as long as your company sendiam berhad or berhad okay every year you must be other buat penyata kewangan and later we learn how to do this penyata kewangan and it is in our kitaran perikanan you saw it this penyata kewangan ah later we learn all the format how to buat ini penyata kewangan okay so and the question is now is why why do we have to use this penyata kewangan who are the person who are the pengguna who are the users of this penyata kewangan okay so we divide them into the internal users and the external users pengguna dalaman dan pengguna luaran okay how do we differentiate meaning those dalaman ialah the people in the company and then the luaran ialah people orang yang luar outside of the company okay who are the person in the company pemilik perniagaan the boss the directors the shareholders all right then the pihak pengurusan the management and then the pekerja is the the pekerja the employee lah okay this is the employer or we call them the boss okay so this are the person why the boss they yeah, i want to check Look at the financial reports. The penyata kewangan mereka nak tahu untung banyak atau tidak. Ah, uh, tahu ini untung okey dah. Because they they not do it wrong. Right, so they have to check. Banyak duit dah. Okay, if okay then okay. Tak okay, they need to do something about it. Then they will ask the management, the pengurusan, pia pengurusan. Who are the pia pengurusan? The managers, the maybe the directors, maybe. Okay, the you know all this person. Okay, all this pihak pengurusan. So all this pihak pengurusan, they have to look at the financial accountant as well. They have to do what planning. All the accountant, they have to look at this financial accountant and see. Okay, this year, ah, uh, mana salah? Where is the problem? Ah, and how do we solve it? And how do we increase our margin profit? How do we increase our profit? Untung in next year. Ah, so they have to look at this penyata kewangan, and lastly is the pekerja. And why do pekerja need to look at our penyata kewangan? Is because this pekerja they have to see lah, ada tak company ini untung? Why do they need to know? Because they are the workers. So if the company doesn't earn money, then the workers need to lari ya. Why lari? They have to change company lah, because if the company don't have money. They won't receive mereka punya gaji. They won't receive any payment or salary from the boss. That's why they always have to look at the ah uh, penyata kewangan from the company and check if this company is stable or not. If it's not stable, then you better make a move to another company that is more stable. Alright. So these are the three pengguna dalaman. The normal one. Okay. Then what about the luaran? The first one will be the bank. Okay. Because when you go to pinjam wang. From the bank, normally ah businesses they will go to loan, okay, pinjam duit dari pada bank. And before bank ah allow you to ah borrow the money from them, they have to check your penyata kewangan, your financial report. That's why your this financial report. I will always say that this financial report is like your report card. What is your report card? Your result. Ah, uh, is to see in in school, you you bought by atau tidak dah. Okay, look at your maths, maths. Hey, wah, 
look at your geography a a juga wah look at your uh, accounts a juga oh so we know that mm, this student is smart okay uh other study macam tu okay so from this report card we can tell uh how is this student doing all right so the same thing for a company they have their own report card which is this penyata kewangan so when they want to borrow money from the bank they have to bring this report card to the bank so that the bank when the bank look at the report card they see hmm your asset macam tu liability okay later we will learn about asset liability ah yeah. okay so look at this your report card your penyata kewangan ayah so bad ah uh, so when bad means what maybe your profit is very low your untung sangat rendah so maybe they won't they tak akan pinjam duit kepada awak okay in vice versa if uh this uh company is doing very well wow, wow, profit banyak asset banyak liability kurang they just look at your this paper this your penyata kewangan then they can tell oh, okay is a stable company a good company a strong company then the bank will be very happy to borrow the money to lend out the money to you okay so this is one of the pengguna loran and then the pembekal pengekal write it down it means a, a supplier Okay, who are these pembuka? Who are these suppliers? The supplier is the one that kita beli barang niaga. Let's say you are a, a company that sell shoes, kasut. Okay, so you sell kasut, but you need to buy kasut from someone. So these are the pembuka. Okay, they are the one that supply the shoes to you. So they want to look at your your uh, penyata kongan as well. They want to see. If they sell the shoes to you, do you have the money to pay or not? Uh, if you don't have the money to pay, then they don't want to sell to you, right? So normally they want to check the financial reports. After that will be the agency kerajaan. Who are the agency kerajaan? Contoh will be LHDN. Okay, they have this um company. They have to submit this uh penyata kewangan to this LHDN, and then they have to do some tax lah and so on. All right, and also the lastly will be the pemegang saham. Pemegang saham is the shareholders. Normally, these shareholders are the potency shareholder. Okay, those that want to buy shares from the company, then they have to check, look at your penyata kewangan. And this one, later you learn it in uh, form five, but one. Okay, you will see how to see if the company is strong or not. Uh, do I need to believe? Do I buy share? Do I invest in this company? Ah, uh, then you look from this ah uh, but one. All the formulas are there. So later lah. Okay. So this is for ah uh, pengguna Lolan. So these are the one, two, three, four, four ah uh, four pihak and then three pihak for the dalam. Okay, anak. Uh, if okay, give me okay. So far, you listening can catch up. Give me a, a okay. Uh, is it because it's almost near to class end? That's why you guys respond so fast, and some of you start to respond as well. All right. Okay. So, so far, uh, if you forget most, I think most of the part you really forgotten lah. But when you read it back, definitely you 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 remember and understand one. So no worries about it. So the first time I'll just give you some. Understanding, to understand like what does it mean, just explain to you, okay. So the next time when you before the exam you study again, then uh, definitely you understand it. All right. So uh, next week we'll cover this one. So this is more important one because uh, this one sometimes they will come out in your uh, paper two, kertas dua, in the first question. Okay. If you know, you know. You don't know, then you don't know. All right. So and then in this one you just have to know lah. Okay. There are four, four different entity penegan. Okay, so in the next class I will explain it to you. Okay, so for today, hmm, hmm, today, go home and try this question three and four lah. Very simple question. Okay, so these are the homeworks. Today's homework. So question three, you just look up and then you're going to see what are the answer for this sub bilang. And then the chidi qualitative. So remember, they are about six. So other uh, yang the the tingkat one and the asas one. So you have to see lah, like which one is for which one. 
So this is a very simple homework. So I believe we can finish it in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. All right. So this one, not yet. Uh, next week. Okay. So, so far, do you understand? Yes or no? Yes, uh, so I know it's a bit boring, but just the first few classes. After that, you'll be fine. Okay. So when we go to BAP2, you will use your calculator very often. Okay. You have to plus minus on all this stuff. Okay. So uh, do you have any questions?